Welcome to One Mind Zen Hermitage. Every so often, in all of our lives, the entire bottom will fall out of everything. Maybe it's a surprise diagnosis of disease for yourself or a loved one. Maybe it's the loss of a job and the fear that without a job, we'll lose our home. Um, maybe it's a giant pandemic that races across the world and you live in a country that absolutely cannot seem to get itself together. When this happens, it can be absolutely overwhelming. And even as regular practitioners of Zen, and even as people who perhaps sit and meditate daily, or read sutras, or, or I should say, and, um, try to hold moment mind from moment to moment. Sometimes these things can hit so hard that it knocks us for a loop. And when the ground falls out from underneath us, there's absolutely nothing there to keep us from falling. Those times are horrifying, whether you're lucky enough to only have it happen a few times in your lifetime, or whether it's a regular feature of your life. There are a few ways that we can work with this event. Um, the first one is to try not to run. It's our human nature to want to get away from this discomfort, um, this anxiety, the terror, the, um, the judgment because our natural inclination is to say, this thing has gone wrong, it's my fault. I'm a bad person. I'm a failure. My family's gonna get kicked out of their house. We're all gonna be homeless. Then my wife's gonna leave me. I'll never see my kids again and I'll die alone and sick on the streets. At least, I can't speak for any of you, but if you're like me, that's kind of the first tumble that happens when the world falls out from underneath. <clears throat> so first we try not to run and instead we turn towards the discomfort um, someone said once to me long ago that the way that you know you're growing in life and in practice is if you're uncomfortable at that time they didn't mention to me that uh, discomfort wasn't just like a mild I'm kind of uncomfy, that <laughs> sometimes it's more along the lines of, holy crap, what am I going to do? But it's still all just discomfort. If we can't do that, because sometimes the discomfort is just so overwhelming and so intense that we just can't right this minute, we just can't face it, then the next thing to try is to consider this thing that is happening as our opportunity to awaken. And we, you know, we all like to think that awakening is this thing that's going to happen one day. We're going to be sitting and we'll be in perfect meditation and absolute repose and a light's going to go off and we're going to be awake and yay, we're done. Now I'm a Buddha. I'm awake. I don't have to suffer anymore which is one of the giant cosmic jokes of early Buddhism because that has not been my experience at all. Um, it seems like every time I wake up a little bit, there's some new disaster that requires me to wake up just a little bit more in order to live through it. So when this thing happens and, and 
maybe this is a little harder to do with some things than others, but when this, when this event happens, if we can look at it and say, this is the thing that I'm going to use today to be awake, to wake up, to recognize my Buddha nature. Holy crap, I just got pulled over by a state trooper. He's sitting beside, behind me on the six lane highway. My tags are suspended and have been for months, but it's coronavirus, so it'll be okay, right? No, it's not okay. Crap. <laughs> All right, well, this is what's happening. I'm gonna use this to wake up, but wait a minute. Um, I'm really stressed and I'm having a hard time sticking with that thought. So if I can't face it because Hey, now I'm crying and the trooper wants to know why I'm so nervous and do I have any weapons in the car? And um, I'm not really mentally able to use the obstacle as the path right now. Um, then the third thing that we can try to do is to dissolve the, the separation between what's happening and myself, right? This doesn't have to be happening to me. This, this big scary trooper who's talking about New York State, and this may or may not be a true story. <laughs> this New York State trooper who's talking about uh, digs about how I could shoot him and walk out of jail the next day because of New York State bail reform, which I have no idea how this might have anything to do with my plates being suspended. Um, this isn't happening to me. He's not doing this to me. This is just what's happening. And he's acting chenchi, and I'm feeling chenchi, and I'm very nervous because he's asking me if I'm afraid of him, and there is no right answer when you're crying. <laughs> so it's not what's happening to me. It's just what's happening. This is what's happening now. There. There's, there's a man with a gun at my window. There are cars barreling past at 75 miles an hour. I'm probably not going to get to this really important appointment on time. Crap. Okay, well, this is just what's happening now. Except sometimes, even that can be a little bit much. Sometimes we can be so overwhelmed in the moment, right? That all of our ideals of being this great, awakened, calm, zen person kind of go right out the window out there with the guy with the gun. And maybe, maybe we're not proud of that, right? But it's what's happening now. What's happening right now is my mind is not still. I am not focusing on any of these things. I am anxious and afraid and very frustrated. What is there that's left to do? And this is where I found the actual wisdom of my day today. Sometimes all we can do is just hang on and get through. And when we get to the other side of this event, whatever it is, however bad it is, you know what? I've lost my job. I am overwrought. My kids are going to be homeless okay, I can't focus on these other things right now. It's too big for me right now, but I can go home and hug my children. If I'm sick and I've got a, a health diagnosis, I can go home and have dinner with my wife, right? I can accept this ticket from this man with the gun and go about my day. And when we get through it, and we're on the other side of it, we have a little bit of space to breathe again, a little bit of space to notice that we're breathing or to start back breathing if we've been holding our breath. Now we can revisit back through these other places that we fell right through when the ground gave out beneath us. Because the great thing is about groundlessness is that as precious an opportunity as it is, and as fleeting an opportunity when the world presents us with groundlessness that we just can't pretend isn't there, it's not gone the moment it's over. It's still in us. 
and we still feel the effects of this um, anxiety and fear and trauma. And we can still learn. So maybe then we go back. Maybe then we, okay, that wasn't, that didn't just happen to me. That's just something that happened. All right, well, we made it to step three. Um, oh, you know what? That thing happened and I was very upset and there's something for me to look at there because I'm very uncomfortable. Now we're on step two. Um, maybe I should spend some time in meditation dealing with that. Bring myself back to moment mind, feel what I felt. And now we're back to step one. And now we can experience the groundlessness as the gift it is. Maybe with a little bit of appreciation for that gift. Thank you.